Hey everybody, today I'm reviewing the Christopher Ward C60 Trident Pro 600. Let's get started. Here you can see the outer packaging. This is a black cardboard box, Christopher Ward logo, embossed in silver on the top. Open that up. And you got a few things here inside of the uh, outer box. It's got a little flap in the front to help you get it out easier. Let's take it out real quick. We have some documentation accessories here. This is actually a microfiber cloth. Nice for cleaning your watch. You have your owner's handbook. Uh, nice satin finish on the manual here. And this just describes some information about the Trident specs and everything here. Uh, the usual. Talks about some of the different uh, Trident options. Here is the inner box. This is a nice imitation leather Christopher Ward embossed on the top nice box a uh, very nice uh, hand to it I guess you could say nice feel and let's open it up and there is the Trident Christopher Ward logo again embossed in silver on the top on this nice cream finish imitation leather here let's take the watch off and the pillow the snug fit there there's the watch. Open it up real quick. Move it aside. You also get a little customary placard. Uh, just says 6060, referring to their warranty on the Christopher Ward watches. We'll get back to that later. So let's put this packaging aside and let's look at the Trident Pro. Again, this is the Trident Pro C60 uh, 600. Sorry, C60 Trident Pro 600. This is the 43 millimeter, millimeter version. It also comes in a 38 millimeter version. A little bit about Christopher Ward. Uh, this is a London-based company, relatively new in the watch, uh, the watch scene as far as luxury watches go. Their whole uh, motto, mission, I guess, from the start was to get you know affordable luxury, supposedly, uh, trying to compete with some of the bigger names with Swiss-made watches that are of comparable quality uh, for the more entry-level consumer. Uh, as they've grown, they've expanded their lines and they now have partnered with, they, they have a watchmaker, uh, I believe his name is Johannes Janke, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but they've actually designed their own in-house movements uh, that they're using for some of their Malvern line and maybe some others, I'm not sure, uh, of um, luxury or dress watches, I suppose. Uh, they have big day dates. They have a five-day reserve watch, I believe now. A lot of options coming out of Christopher Ward. So, uh, interesting company to look at. And their prices have been uh, excellent. <clears throat> They've gone up a little bit more recently, but are still uh, definitely affordable for what you're getting. Let's talk about the Trident, though. There's two versions of the Trident. There's the Trident, I guess classic Trident 300, and the Trident Pro 600. The 300 and 600 refer to the water resistance. 300 meters on the Trident 300, self-explanatory, and 600 on the 600 Trident. Uh, they've made some updates to the Trident line with the Trident Pro here, uh, including uh, ceramic bezel, uh, just uh, just more better fit and finish. It's uh, really a nice nice watch here. This is my first Christopher Ward watch that I've purchased, and uh, I'm very impressed. So let's go ahead and look a little deeper or look look into it a little more. The case here, again, 43 millimeter case with the option of a 38 millimeter case. This is uh, 316L stainless steel, marine grade case and bracelet. The case here is 13.3 millimeters tall. <clears throat> a nice horizontal brushing there on the sides of the case. Polished lugs. Excellent fit and finish everywhere. Nothing, there's no play in anything. Um, and that crown is very nice as well. That's a bead bladded plastic crown with the Christopher Ward logo right there. Does not quite line up when it's screwed in though. <clears throat> this is a screw down crown. Always nice to see on a diver style watch. The bracelet is a uh, pretty classic style. It's, you know, brushed on the sides, polished in the center, tapered, has a nice. Uh, deployment clasp, no safety action on that. That's okay. It's a very positive engagement on the clasp. Pardon the the little hairline scratches here. This is my 
one of my daily wear watches, so um, it does show a little bit of wear. Christopher Ward logo there on the machined buckle. Also, this buckle does have a diver's deployment. You can see here, with the buckle open, all you do is just kind of press down, and it'll open up for to fit a wetsuit. Uh, I have dove with this watch, um, a diver, and it, it did perfectly fine down to about 100 feet. Uh, also, looking at the case, continuing on, we see a, a nice deep stamp case back, screw down case back. It says Trident Pro 600 meter ceramic, Swiss made. Uh, very nice case back, uh, deep etching there, or stamping, I guess. Very nice finish. Looking at the front here, one of the big things that uh, drew me to this watch is the ceramic bezel. Uh, this has a zirconia dioxide, I believe, zirconium dioxide, zirconia ceramic bezel. It gives it this really nice, uh, almost like glossy, wet looking finish to it. It's really a step up from like an aluminum bezel. This does have a sapphire crystal. It's a 3.4, I believe, 3.4 millimeter thick sapphire crystal with AR coating. Very nice coating on it. You can see almost from a horizontal angle, you can still view it cleanly. Nice crystal. I do have a tiny little chip somewhere here. I'm not even sure where it is. Yep, right over here. That is one of the disadvantages of sapphires that it's a little more brittle. But again, I've hit this direct on the face and no damage so far besides a little chip. The bezel, I mean, the, sorry, the dial is a white dial. It does come in some other options as well. They have a black dial, they have a blue dial, I believe, and a green dial. Uh, so there's definitely some different options, as well as different bezel colors. You can get a black dial, red bezel. So there's a there's a few different models there. Nice solid action on the bezel. It's 120 click. No play whatsoever. Uh, sideways or in the uh, rotation of the bezel. Very solid click you can hear there. Nice little loom pit there at 12 o'clock. <clears throat> on the face of the dial here, we see uh, 12 hour indices. You got a double bar at 12 just to help orient you in the dark. This is this is all done. <clears throat> excuse me, with a Swiss C1 Super Luminova. The loom on this is excellent. No problems at all. One of the better loomed watches that I have. You also have individual little pips there for each second. Those little green indices. Hard to see. There you go. Those little green indices are loomed as well. So it does give you a little 12 hour uh, loom. We'll see that in a moment when we take it in the dark. Nice polished bar indices. They're perfectly placed, of course. Very nice little gloss on it when it hits the light. The hands are great. They do have the Trident. Uh, that's kind of their trademark Trident counterbalance on the second hand. This watch uses a ETA. 2824-2 movement or a Salida SW200-1 movement. Uh, the Salida is basically a copy of the ETA. They're said to be pretty much comparable. 38 hour power reserve. It does have a hacking movement and some shock isolation to help protect that. Also on the dial you'll see, let me move the hands a little bit here just so we can see easier. You'll see the Christopher Ward London logo up here. Trident Pro, 600 meter, 2,000 feet, automatic, Swiss made. One of the big things, like I said, the ceramic bezel was one of the things that drew me to it. Also is this nice wave pattern. They call it a guilloche pattern. I believe it is guilloche, guilloche, I'm not sure, uh, on the dial. It reminded me of an Omega Seamaster, which is one of, kind of one of my uh, watches that I've always loved. So It's a nice subtle little wave pattern there that comes out really nice on the white dial, I think. You also have a nice bordered white date logo at 3 o'clock. Uh, pretty simple dial. Uh, you know, it does fit a diver pretty well, but it does have a little bit more of a dressy feel to me with the bar indices as opposed to the standard, you know, circular indices that you get on a lot of dive watches. Again, this is a screw down crown. Nice smooth threads on that. So you'll unscrew it to adjust it. The first position is just to hand wind the movement. You can wind it by hand. It also does. It is an automatic movement, so you can just you know uh, wear it or spin it like that to uh, to wind it up. Pull it out to the first step. Whoops! Let me get it here. First step. 
Jeez, a little trouble there. <laughs> All right, first step is to adjust the date. There you go. And second step is to adjust time. And that's it. That's all the adjustments you've got. And really, that's all you need on a dive watch. Uh, let's do a little wrist shot here real quick. This watch, again, 43 millimeters, so it does have some heft with the solid bracelet, solid end links as well, by the way, which is, I, I would certainly hope so at this price point. But uh, with the solid end links and solid bracelet, it does have some heft, which I really like in a, in a sporty watch like this. It's nice enough, though, I would say, that it looks good with even a, you know, a button-down shirt, that kind of thing, uh, long sleeves. A little tall to fit under the sleeve, so you kind of have to help it sometimes get under there. That, you will see that there, with the crown, it's a, it's a reasonably long crown, and it does back up, uh, bottom out, I guess, on the back of your wrist. This doesn't, isn't something that bothers me. I'm just used to it. You do have micro adjustments on the bracelet as well, by the way. Uh, full link adjustment. So overall, I'm really happy with the fit of this. I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist, I believe, last time I measured, which was a while ago. But uh, that's that's it on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, 43 millimeter. I think that the 38 would have been a little small for me. I guess it depends on your taste. It's nice that they have both options though, so you can pick. Again, very nice fit and finish. There's no play in the band or anything. Very comfortable. So there it is on the wrist. Let's go ahead and take it into the dark, and we'll see how that loom does. I'll be right back. All right, we're in a dark room with the Christopher Ward C60 Trident Pro 600. I've been charging it up with a light, so let's go ahead and take a look at the loom. There it is. Right off the bat, you can see the loom is actually bright enough that it's lighting up the Christopher Ward logo there. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, Swiss C1 Super Luminova throughout. You got it on the bezel pip your hour, minute, and second hands, as well as all the bar indices around the dial indicating the hour positions. And a light, nice little tiny loom pip right above each indice as well. I really like that they indicated the 12 o'clock position there with the double bar. Just helps if it's laying on a desk or something and it's sideways, you can tell right away, 12 o'clock's right there. So you know where to grab and you can orient yourself to the time easily. This is loom that'll last all night, no problem. Uh, if I charge it up before I go to sleep or something, and I wake up at 6 a.m. looking in the dark on the desk trying to find the time. No problem. I can read it. Easy. Uh, so, A plus in my book. No problem there with the loom. They did well. Let's go ahead and turn the lights back on and we'll finish up the review. Alright, we're back in the light with the Trident Pro here. Some final thoughts. Uh, pricing. I paid right about 800 for this watch. I, there was a sale running. I think I paid like 802, 803. There are they do run sales pretty regularly. I think the standard price is like nine fifteen on their website, but I've seen it as low as I believe like six hundred. So just keep an eye out for sales. I'm not affiliated with them. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Just letting you know. Value for money, I think for eight hundred, it is a fair purchase. Obviously, it's not a budget watch. Uh, it is more of an investment, <clears throat> but for that price, you're getting a time tested movement, the ETA or the Salita. Salida hasn't been around as long, but it's essentially just a direct clone, so it should have a similar uh, durability. You're getting a very nice case, obviously, with excellent finishing on the bracelet, case, everything. You're getting a sapphire crystal, you're getting 600 meters of water resistance, and you're getting a ceramic bezel, which is an excellent feature. This black runs all the way throughout. I forgot to mention that earlier. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you scratch the upper part of this bezel or something, it's not going to show up a nasty silver through that through that scratch. It's still going to be a scratch, but it'll be a black scratch throughout, so it's, it hides scratches extremely well. You're getting an excellent loom, and you're getting fantastic finishing all throughout. I've had people probably a dozen times ask me, is that a Rolex? Is that the goal for a, an affordable watch? Entry-level luxury, I guess you could say? No, but I think it says something about the fit and finish of this watch. Um, you can clearly see that this is well above anything like a Seiko or anything like that. The fit and finish is just on another level. So, value for money, I think that it is worth the price. Of course, that's in the that's in to each his own, I suppose. But I think that this is an excellent step into the luxury level of watches. Any questions? Feel free to post them, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.